Hi, I'm Diana Handy, and I'm one of the therapists here at New Roads. Um, and I'm going to teach you about what some interpersonal effectiveness skills, which is one of the four main skill areas of DBT. Um, interpersonal effectiveness is exactly what it sounds. It's how do we um, maintain good relationships and keep people in our lives? Um, how do we end unhealthy relationships? And how do we um, treat people in a way that they're going to want to be around us? Um, so we're going to do two different skills. We're going to do the give skill and the fast skill. We're actually going to start with the give skill and the give skill is designed to help you keep a relationship. So in any relationship, um, be it small or great. So from, you know, having a good marriage to interacting with someone at a checkout counter, we want to be effective. We want to be able to maintain good relationships and sometimes you might think, I don't care if the kid at McDonald's cares what I, you know, cares about me or cares how I treat them. But there actually are goals that we have to maintain a relationship. Yeah, we may not care about the kid at McDonald's or, you know, not feel like we have to go out of our way to be nice to him. We also don't want him to spit in our food. So we want to maintain relationships and help us get what we want. And that's just normal for a relationship. I want my family to love me. I also want them to help me move when, because I don't want to carry all my boxes by myself. So it's not bad to have needs met by other people. That's actually very human and social and part of who we are. But we want to do it in an effective way that, um, that, that maintains a relationship. Okay, so we're going to start with a gentle approach. So when we're interacting with someone, we want to be gentle. We want to avoid attacks. We want to avoid threats and manipulation. We don't want to say, if you don't do this, I'm going to, you know, there's a lot of manipulations that are possible and I'm sure as parents you've heard them all, um, but it doesn't engender good feelings toward people. Um, so we don't want to make threats. We want to avoid judging. Well, that means we're not calling people names. We're not um, doing put downs. We're not telling them what they should or shouldn't be or do. Um, should kind of implies that we're already judging. So if I say, you should have gone to school, instead of saying it was an option to go to school, there, there's a difference. There's a difference in how we interpret that and how we feel when we hear it. Um, the last thing we want to do is not be disrespectful. We don't want to be sneering and showing contempt. Um, we want to know our audience. Some people would be okay with profanity. Some people would find it incredibly aggressive. Um, so as an example of gentle approach, um, I have a friend who decided that she was too passive and she was going to work on being more assertive. Um, and so we were driving in my car, I was driving, and we got off an exit, which is one of the roundabout exits. And I have a small car, it's low to the ground, I can go around curves fairly quickly. She has a different type of car. So as I'm going around the circle, she yells, slow down, which I did not enjoy. And so, you know, when I came to a stoplight, I said, hey, I, I really didn't like that. You know, trying to be gentle, a little bit assertive. And she said, well, I think it was warranted, so I'm not sorry. So, not gentle. Um, did not build our relationship. And then I, in turn, was not the most gentle in my response. Um, and that didn't help our relationship. It was actually tense for a few days after that. And I could have, even in response to aggression, if I had remained gentle, the situation would have gone a lot better. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is act interested. Now, you don't have to be interested, but you do have to act interested. When we want something from someone, it's easy to get focused on what I want, what I need. It's so important. Um, but we have to always remember there's another person who's just as important as us. And if we don't treat them as, just, if it's, as their needs being just as important as ours, they're not going to stay in our life and help us meet our needs. Using the moving example, if I need help moving and I ask my, um, ask my brother to come help me move and he says, well, you know, my daughter's got a dance recital and, you know, the truck actually needs new tires and, you know, and he's going through his list of things that while he's trying to figure out whether he can help me, 
If I'm like, yeah, 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 come on, what about the moving? I have to move my stuff. Um, I'm going to, I'm, he's not going to want to help me as much. He's going to be put off by that and he's not going to think I care about him. So even if I'm worried about my stuff and I'm worried about getting everything moved out on time, taking the time to show interest in what he's going through is going to keep our relationship healthy and it's going to make him more likely to help me. You know, if I say, oh, you're so busy, I really understand that. You know, we like, is there anything I can do to help? Maybe I could drive your daughter to the dance recital while you went and got tires. Um, so showing interest um, also involves not interrupting, not jumping, um, uh, listening to someone else's reasons and being patient. Um, probably the most important part of acting interested is not mind reading. So we're not jumping to conclusions. We're going to ask people what they think and what they feel. We're not going to say, I know you're thinking that, okay, in a moving scenario, I might say, I know you're thinking that I've already moved three times in the last five years and it's not fair because you haven't moved at all. I'm going to say, you know, I, I, it's, it's hard for me to ask because I know I've asked a lot, but I really appreciate what you've done. So I'm not saying you're judging me. I say, I really hope you're not thinking I'm asking too much and I understand you need to take care of your, take care of your life as well. All right, next is validation. Um, validation is probably the most important part of building relationships. We wanna be with people who make us feel good and we wanna make other people feel good. That actually brings a, a deep sense of satisfaction. So when we validate, I wanna be clear that validation is not agreeing with people. It's not telling them they're right if you think they're wrong. Um, and it's not, um, it, it, it's not basically kind of giving in to someone. Validation is communicating that you understand what someone's saying and that you understand the why of how they're feeling. Um, so you're not, you're saying, I get what you mean and I understand why you feel that way or I understand your thinking. So when we validate, um, we want to validate the valid. So it doesn't mean we have to agree with someone to validate them. Um, we just have to convey that we understand. So one example might be, um, let's do a parenting example. Um, if your child doesn't get their allowance because they didn't clean their room and a child comes up to you and they're so mad and my room's clean enough and what's the matter with you? and Having those beads on the floor isn't a problem because I'm gonna use them later anyway. Or um, the Tonka trucks are set up in just the perfect way and so I can't put them away or I won't be able to play. Or whatever reason your kid has for not doing their chores, there's a million of them. You don't, we wanna validate because we want to maintain a good relationship. So I'm not saying, oh yeah, you don't have to clean your room. I'm saying, you're really upset you don't have your allowance. And you're having your toys out really is what you want right now. And it's not that you don't want your room to be clean and that's hard for you. So when I'm validating, I'm conveying that I understand why they think what they do. Um, so there, there's a lot more to validation that hopefully we'll get into in a later video. Um, but just as a rule of thumb, making sure you let people know that you understand what they're thinking, what they're feeling, and if you can, put it in context of, you know, even saying, I know you've had bad experiences with this before, and so it, it makes it really hard for you. Um, so kind of understanding the context of what's going on for someone, even if you don't agree with what they're doing. Okay, the last part of the give skill is easy manner. And easy manner means that we're, we go about things with a light touch. Uh, we can use humor, we smile, we use the soft sell when we're asking for things. Um, so we're not making everything super serious. We're not making it intense. Um, people are more likely to agree with us when we're pleasant. So we're conveying to the other person that this conversation is safe, that they can relax, um, that this is not life or death. So when I'm asking someone to help me move, if I say, if I say, hey, Carrying boxes is your favorite thing ever, and I'm gonna help you out by giving you the opportunity to do it with me on Saturday. 
So I'm using some humor, some soft sell. If I say, if people don't come help me move, then I'm going to lose all my stuff because they're going to change the locks and I won't have anything and I'll probably have to come live with you, which is a manipulation. So it's not gentle. Um, so when we use an easy manner, um, okay. so using humor, using kindness, um, it, we, we don't want, if people are tense, they're going to feel more self-protective. They're going to be less likely to help us. And if we're super intense, people are going to get tired. They're not going to want to be around us because it's so overwhelming. Um, and that is the gift skill that will help you keep relationships, will help you maintain good relationships and be able to get your needs met with the people you're in relationships with. The second interpersonal effectiveness skill we're going to go over is the FAST skill. Now the FAST skill is designed to help you keep your self-respect in your interactions with others. So we don't want to be so passive that we feel like we're getting walked all over. We want to feel like we're important and that you know we're showing respect for ourselves as well as for other people. So when we're keeping our self-respect, we want to be able to ask for what we need or to say no to other people and still feel good about ourselves afterward. You know, there are a lot of ways that are manipulative or underhanded or um, dishonest that we can use to get our needs met, um, but then we don't feel good about ourselves afterward. So we don't want to be super passive and feel like we're being taken advantage of. We don't want to be aggressive and feel bad for our behavior after. Um, and something that goes along with that would also be being incredibly self-centered and selfish. And when we do that, um, we're going to get bad feedback from other people. We're going to lose relationships and we're going to feel bad about ourselves. So to keep our self-respect, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be fair. We're not going to take advantage of other people. We're not going to keep badgering them until they give in. Um, we're not going to ask people for more than it's fair for us to ask for. Um, really, we should, ideally, we would all do everything for ourselves that we were capable of doing and ask for help with the rest. Um, so we're going to be fair to ourselves and to other people. So we're not going to ask too much of people and we're not going to give more than we have available. Um, and so it's important to think about, is this fair for both of us? Is the relationship reciprocal? Is this something I would be willing to do for someone else that I'm asking someone else to do for me? Okay, the next is no apologies. And I'm going to be really clear on this. This doesn't mean stop apologizing when you make a mistake. Um, apologies are a good thing. They help relationships. Um, but what we're talking about in keeping our self-respect with no apologies is not over apologizing. We're not going to say that we're sorry for basically for having needs, for being alive, for um, uh, having things that are important to us or for having boundaries. So one of example of that would be something that parents come across a lot, which is um, letting people know what's okay and not okay in your home. Um, you know, if you have a child who's using drugs or who is stealing, um, you don't have to apologize for making it clear that that's not okay. Um, so we don't have to say we're sorry for having an opinion. I don't have to say, I'm so sorry, but you can't stay here if you're using drugs. You can say, I love you, I care about you, and there can't be drugs in my house, that's my limit. Um, we don't have to say, I'm so sorry to ask when we ask someone for a favor. If we're, sometimes we over apologize trying to make it a soft sell, but when we over apologize, we either imply that we're wrong um, or really it gets annoying. I mean, I'm sure we all know people who apologize over and over again and it puts people off and that is not interpersonally effective. Don't apologize for having an opinion. If you disagree with someone, you don't have to start with, I'm sorry. Instead, of, you could start with, I think a different way about it. You don't have to be aggressive, um, but you don't have to apologize. Um, unless you've done something wrong, then please apologize. It's very important and it'll help you keep a relationship. 
Okay, so the S stands for stick to your values. So stick to your values means that I'm not going to say yes to things that I'm uncomfortable with. I'm not going to tell someone it's okay when it's not. Um, I'm not going to respect myself if I give in to what people want so they'll like me. Um, and, but I'm doing things that I don't think are good. So when I'm sticking to my values, I'm saying it's okay to live by my values and I don't have to share yours. So if this is something that comes up a lot for people in recovery, of uh, somebody says, hey, go to a bar with us, you don't have to drink. And you know, there are some people in recovery who would be okay with that. I don't recommend it, especially not in early recovery. But a lot of times um, my clients and the people you know, that we love who are in recovery will feel pressured um, and so they don't stick to their values and they put themselves in dangerous situations. So it's okay to say, hey, have a good time at the bar. It's not a place I can be and I, that's not something I'm ever going to do, but I care about you and have a good time. So we're also not asking people to do things that don't go along with their values. So the example that comes to mind for me for sticking to your values is something that comes up over and over again as a therapist at New Roads. Um, clients, depending on their face, have a certain amount of privileges and we all want privileges. We want to be able to do more things. And so I am very often asked to grant privileges that have not yet been earned by uh, FaZe. And I am constantly told, well, Tracy didn't make her clients do this, Jordan didn't do that, Ines doesn't care. Um, and sometimes that's true. We, we, make ex we make exceptions based on our best judgment on what we think is best for individual clients. Um, but when I say no, uh, I can often get an angry response and that's okay. Um, I'm communicating to my clients that um, I have my limits and that it's okay for me to have limits. Um, and that respecting limits is a one way to get what you want. You know, if they push and push and push um, and are mean about it, then they're, it's less likely that's going to be effective in helping them get what they want in the future. So um, it's, it can be really effective to say to someone, I care, I know this is important to you, and I have to say no um, because I feel like that's what's best. And I don't have to apologize and I don't have to over explain. Um, and, and that's something that can be very val valuable in parenting. It's, it's vital to be able to say, this is what's okay and this is what's not. Um, and to not sell out your values for someone to like you or for someone to agree with you um, or to feel taken advantage of because you let your boundaries collapse. All right, so the last part of keeping your self-respect is telling the truth, be truthful. Um, a lot of times we think we have to lie, manipulate, exaggerate, um, or uh, leave things out in order to get our needs met. And that's something that's really common in, um, in drug culture and in a, in, for people who are using is that they've gone to all sorts of means to try to keep feeding that craving. Um, and so, but it's something that I think we all struggle with to some degree is that a lot of times it seems easier to lie to get what we want than to be direct, to be vulnerable and say, I have a need and will you help me? Uh, we try to come at it sideways. Um, so now I'm not saying you 100% honesty all the time, always. Little white lies were invented for a reason. Um, there is such a thing as tact. There's such a thing as timing. Um, and you don't have to say everything that comes to your mind because it's honest. It can be honest, but it can still be rude. Um, there's a movie called The Invention of Lying. And the thing that struck me in that movie was that their version of no one lying was everyone said exactly what they thought. And it was mean. It was really mean. And so we can be truthful and still be tactful. Um, now I'm not saying you can never ever lie, but usually lying eventually damages a relationship. Um, you know, if I exaggerate my need and someone finds out that really it was something I was capable of my own, they're going to feel manipulated. 
Um, it's not going to help me keep the relationship and I'm going to feel bad about myself when I know that, um, that I'm not being fair to other people. Those are the interpersonal effectiveness skills we're going over today. Just as a reminder, the give skill helps us keep and maintain healthy relationships. Um, we want to be gentle in how we approach people, show that we're interested and that they're important to us. We want to validate their feelings, their emotions, and what they're going through. We don't have to agree with people to be validating and kind to them. And we want to use an easy manner. We don't want to be intense. We don't want to be aggressive. Um, the fast skill is for keeping your self-respect in relation to other people. So we're going to be fair to other people. We're going to not ask too much or more than they're willing to give. We're not going to over apologize. It's okay to have limits to communicate them and that's not something that you have to apologize for or feel bad about. That's important. That's part of a healthy relationship. Um, stick to your values. You don't have to preach your values or make someone else try to share your values, but do live your own values. That will, it's a, it's a much happier way to live. And then finally, we're going to be honest about our needs. Um, we're going to be honest in how we try to get things and we're going to accept no when we're told no. Um, and that helps keep self-respect and that helps keep the relationship. Um, anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I hope it's something that you can use. It's something that I not only teach to clients, but try to practice in my life and stop and think, okay, how, you know, I haven't been validating. How can I validate? Um, but I, I think these skills are so effective and so helpful and I'm glad to get to share them with you. Thank you.